so good to welcome Levi and Jenny back to the podcast. And this time you're not separate, you're together. So <laughs> welcome to the Awesome Rage Pass podcast to both of you guys. Thank you so much, Dr. Kim. It's great to be here again. Oh, Thanks for having us. And we're happy to be here together. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, <laughs> in a marriage podcast, you ought to not separate the couple. I mean, that doesn't go along with what we talk about. It, so. it feels right, you know. Yeah, it feels right. <laughs> that's good. So we're going to talk about some about a lot of things, but about this new book, The Marriage Devotional. Uh, just as from a standpoint of someone that writes also, what was it like to write this together? And was it different? How long do you have? No, <laughs> you know, because we're, we're still it was, married, right? Yeah, we're still, we're married, still married happily. Married. Uh, yes, uh, this last week we celebrated 19 years since I proposed to her. So it will hit the anniversary soon, but just uh, looking back on almost 20 years since we uh, have been promised in marriage. And yeah, we, we had so much fun. You know, we've both written, of course, by ourselves. And right. so we were a little bit nervous. How is this going to be processed? Because we have very different, you know, writing processes. But we both felt such a big conviction. And one of the big things we believe is when you have a sense of calling, it makes mm. the hardships easier, mm. you know? So we it's felt true. a sense of purpose. It wasn't just like, oh, what are we going to do next? We both felt like God's Holy Spirit really prompted yeah. us to work on this resource, this yeah. tool. And because of that, you know, yes, there was, there was, you know, sanctification moments, uh, but it was also honestly so fun together. Yeah. And I think what I love also about the devotional is that um, there are ones that we write together and then there's ones that are just me and ones that are just him. So I feel like you kind of get our voices. And so that was fun to kind of just fully be like, okay, this is me. This is me writing it. It's not me and Levi, it's me. But then also to hear his voice and our voice together. Like it was just really fun. And, um, and I think whenever a, mar a married couple does something like this risks and does something that will hopefully help people grow in their relationship and, and dive deeper into the word, there's going to be, um, there's going to be hard stuff that comes up because the enemy doesn't want us to do this. So, I mean, we've definitely felt that just spiritual like mm -hmm. attack and just hard stuff um, as a result of just walking in what God was asking us to do. But it's been so, it's been so good. And I, I love it. And I really, I really think it's going to help. Oh yeah. So couples, did you learn any, did either one of you learn anything about the other person that you didn't know before? Hmm. It's a good question. That is a good question. You know, I, the thing that, and I'll, I'll maybe I'll have to let that um, marinate before something will come to me. I'm sure that's the case. But <laughs> one thing that struck me was we were recording the audio book for it. And we did something we've never done before where, as we, as Jenny mentioned, she's got her parts, I've got mine, but then there's lots of parts that are written in our same, with our same voice. You'll, you'll just see Levi and Jenny. And we, and we put that in there. So readers will know this section was written by Levi, this section yeah. was written by Jenny, but um, the audiobook, we did it in that way, but then the parts we wrote together, we actually were in the studio, uh, together reading it and, and we were kind of riffing and changing in, in just having fun and giving some of the audiobook listeners stuff that maybe they, the, yeah. the book wouldn't get above and beyond. Um, and it was funny how we both felt this, we were ministered to by ourselves, <laughs> the Lord, <laughs> wow. because of you know, things we're going through right now, we were reading something. It was like, oh, wow, I really needed to hear that. Yeah. And it was just funny the Lord using ourselves to minister to ourselves in the season that we're in now, which is different, honestly, than it was a year and a half ago when we started working on this. Right. Yeah. That's so true. Well, and I think too, um, just as, I mean, as you're, I mean, when you're studying for a message, when you're studying anything, like you're learning so much. And I think that in this, as I was writing about things that I've struggled with, or I've learned and then hearing things that Levi's learned and grown in, like, and just seeing, like, I just, I guess I was just felt so encouraged because it was like, man, looking back on our marriage, looking back on our relationship, looking back on you and your growth and like just seeing like such beauty and almost 19 years of marriage, like just seeing the, the beauty and the flourishing and the strength from the hard work that we've put into it. Like it was just it was just really, it was special to me to just be reminded like, oh my gosh, like God's done so much in our lives. It's really a celebration. It's a, yeah. a celebration of what God's done. And, yeah. 
And hopefully yeah. that's motivation to people, not not bragging. Oh like, yeah, 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 our marriage is so good. Absolutely. Hopefully, you we're know, still I, we're still learning I and growing. Think, yeah, of course <laughs> we are too. Uh, yes, yes. Um, the, the 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 cool thing though is that you know, Doctor Kim, you know, the standard you guys can be the standard, when we can tell people, hey, marriage is possible. I mm -hmm. you know it's not easy, but there is a thriving version of your marriage. We want to present people with that, not not an unrealistic version. Uh, that's fake, but one that says, Hey, look, if you work hard, that you can see results. You can see your marriage be a blessing to you. And I do, I do think that's important because everybody loves to talk about how hard marriage is, <laughs> but we've always felt a conviction that we want to be an example to people that marriage is also fun yeah, and yeah. that there's a lot to look forward to. Yeah. No, I agree. And it, it, it's funny, Nancy, I've been married 50 years now. And so wow. it's, uh, it is funny how people look at us now, you know, because we've made it and we try to be really honest and transparent about our stories that, you know, this wasn't a cakewalk. We went right. through a lot of, a lot of tough things over the years, but I think it, I think it is encouraging and the stuff that we do, a lot of stuff we do online is it's just for fun. And I want people to see us having fun together. Cause I think that's such an important thing that you brought up. You know, sometimes I'll work with somebody in counseling and I'll say, what do you do for fun? And it's like, they get the deer in the headlight look. And I, I said, well, what'd you do when you were dating? And, you know, then they can give me 20 things they did. And hmm. so I think that's so important to people to see that it is fun. Yes, it's work, but golly, there's a lot of fun. Dr. Kim, what do we have to look forward to? What, what What's fun, what's fun for you uh, and your wife now? What do you guys love to do? I'm sure a lot more discretionary time being empty nesters, right? It, it is. Grandkids are, 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 are amazing. Hmm. Uh, I thought our kids was the best thing in the world and they're not grandkids are so <laughs> kind of transition into that uh, but I would say that and I think too just that we we have I think we do a good job with the extra time that we have uh, we started painting pickleball together about a year and a half ago Fine. and we've got some good friends we play with and the grandkids play sometimes and so we're always looking for something new to do together and I think now that we have some time to do that because we don't have to be home to do homework or to you know, all those days of, of having to be home to feed somebody and those things are, right. are, are free. And so we, we look for new things to do and new adventures. And, and so I think, um, we love this stage of life. It's just wow. great. Well, we it's can't fun. wait, I know. honestly, come quickly right now. <laughs> Say help. Yeah. Said help. No. <laughs> exactly. So we talked just a minute before we get on Levi about scripture and, and how this book gets us into scripture and how that's not I don't know. That's not a popular thing right now for some reason. As just an individual believers, why does it matter that we get into scripture? Wow. Mm. Well, what a great question. Yeah. yeah. We have such a conviction, uh, Dr. Kim, about pointing people to the word. You know, Jesus said uh, from Genesis to Revelation, these are they which concern me. And it was him pointing to Genesis, Leviticus, Numbers, Isaiah, that caused and showing how he was at the center of it that caused the hearts of the disciples to burn on the road to Emmaus and that caused them to go from despondent and discouraged to full of zeal and r racing back to Jerusalem to tell the other people where before they were afraid. And I think um, Barna did a, a study going into and coming out of the pandemic where they asked Americans, how many uh, of you read the Bible every single day? And the number actually shockingly went down in the pandemic. Wow. People were reading less Bible in a time of global fear, uncertainty, division, and animosity. And wow. it's like, well, no wonder everyone's so anxious and depressed yeah. and lonely and, you know, angry. checking out of life and angry <laughs> and divorcing. And, mm. you know, it's, it, we, we needed the, the scriptures more than ever. Yeah. And yet people were turning to it less, turning to news more, social media more, binge watching whatever on whatever new yeah. platform that we're now paying nine ninety nine a month for so that we can feel anxious. And, uh, you know, I'm not against Netflix. Uh, Jenny and I wow. love a good, you know, rom romance or drama or whatever, comedy. But um, we need the Bible. Yeah. You know, we yeah. need it more than our necessary food. Jesus said we, we need our earthly food like bread. But more than that, we need word that, word, bread that comes from, from, from heaven. And it's that which sustains us and strengthens us and gives us hope. And so a conviction from the very beginning for Jenny and I about this marriage devotional was that this wasn't just a chance for us to give our opinions, which do not matter at the end of the day. Hmm. Uh, it's to point people to God's word. Yeah. That's what marriage needs to be built on because it, marriage was his idea. And if it was God given, it should be God governed. Yeah. Just like, you know, Jenny got a Volvo the other day and, you know, we're, what did I do when I needed to figure out how to set the presets on, on the, on the seats? I looked to the manual. 
And in the manual, it tells me, and I want Volvo to tell me how to use a Volvo, (laughs) just like, uh, just like we should go to God to teach us how to use marriage and not culture. So Mm. that's why the scripture, I mean, you will find hundreds of verses and a lot of them we give people to uh, look up on their own. Some of them are in the application sections, but a lot of them are our chance to teach your, to, to anchor and teach the, the content through the book. Yeah. And one of my favorite verses, um, John 15, 5, Jesus is talking about um, what it looks like to abide in him. He's like, um, abide in me and I in you. Um, for if, if you have abide in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit for apart from me, you can do nothing. And, and a part of reading the word is abiding with Jesus mm-hmm. and that and deepening that relationship with him and allowing him to speak into my heart and getting to know him and what he wants for my life. And so if, if, if apart from him, we can do nothing, then there's no strength. There's no fruit. There's nothing being cultivated. There's no flourishing. There's no strength apart from him and his word and time spent with him. And so it's just, it's vital. Like, it's like Levi said, it's our food. It's what, it's our water. It's, it's our sustenance. It's everything we need in order to live a life, um, that points to Jesus, that is full of strength and beauty and kindness and love. And we can't, we can't do anything without him. So it's like, we, we need the word. We need it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, I love the way you, you said that, Jenny. And cause I think the people have assumptions about the Bible and well, if I read the Bible, he's going to tell me all this stuff I can't do or a lot of stuff. But I love that you just talked, focused on the abiding. There's so much peace in the Bible. And besides the things that God tells us that are going to make our lives better and our marriages better, but there is just a peace in knowing that we're reading the word of the creator of the universe. And Mm. he knows, like Levi said, he created marriage. So why don't we go to his manual? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was was a great, uh, great deal. So I do have one side question. Levi, did you, did you get all the um, stuff on the Volvo worked out? You know what? It's a work in process. You know, those Europeans, uh, they don't make things easy. Uh, Dr. Kim, uh, we've, we, our previous car was a Honda. And so we had gotten kind of used to that. Uh, yeah. uh, but now, you know, Volvo puts everything in a different place. So you sure. got to figure it all out, which kind of is, 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 is a little bit like what, one of the things we try and communicate in the book. And, and that is that, um, your marriage changes from season to season. Mm. It's a living thing. It's a dynamic thing. Okay. You're changing, your wife's changing, the world's changing. You're, you know, like you mentioned, uh, now empty nesting, now grandkids, you know, for us, we still have a four-year-old wedding the bed, uh, five-year-old, sorry. Um, I'm working sure. on the ages, but he, he, you know, he woke late. up yesterday letting <laughs> us know he had wet the bed, which is a really, really rare, rare thing for him. But, but that's, that's happening. But then we also have our oldest who just turned 17 and is, you know, of course in the next year or so going to be looking at college and what God has for her next. And so, Mm. you know, our our marriage is different in this condition uh, than it was, you know, 12 years ago or five years ago, and it's going to be different 10 years from now. So just like uh, I need to look at the manual for this new car. Well, you also need to look at the manual for the new season and Mm. to see what's happening because God's always doing a new thing. That's right. And you can't, you know, rely on yesterday's manna to use Jenny's analogy, because in the children of Israel's experience, if they tried to stockpile the manna, uh, it would grow wormy. So yeah. similarly, I can't rely on yesterday's quiet time or last year's revelation or what, mm. what I got out of fasting or praying <laughs> 10 years ago. I need to be, of course, those things are going to still, you know, nourish me, but I need to, I need to uh, be letting God teach me new things for this new season. So today I was on my knees yeah. asking for, for Jenny's strength, my strength. As I'm praying for her, it makes me less a- able to be irritated with her. It's hard to be mad at someone you're yeah. praying for, yeah. you know? That's true. So yeah. anyhow, I just think. Exactly. It really is uh, so imperative that we let God's word set the pace for our lives. Oh, that's, that's so good. And, you know, I, th- I think we would like to think that we get it and we can coast the rest of our lives, but we don't. And, I, you know, when we begin to look at the different seasons and phases we go through and, yeah, with raising kids, each new s- space they go into uh, are new challenges and, right. and all those kind of things. And, w- and we need God's strength. Facts. Yes. Absolutely. So, okay. We talked about individually, the books for cap couples, it's a marriage devotional. Why does it matter that couples get in the word together? Great question. Hmm. Gosh. I mean, everything Levi was saying about if, if God gave it, we should let God govern it. And I think that, um, as we seek, I mean, if we're not seeking God 
and a re- deeper relationship with Jesus on our own, um, that's going to be hard to do together. And so that's the, that's a key thing is we are in love with Jesus on our own and he's number one. And, but then as we do that, he's the center of our relationship. And so for us to be able to, um, I mean, like we don't always read the word together, like in this, in terms of like, Oh, let's read the word, the actual embodiment together. Yeah. 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 But we're reading the word together. Like we're reading through the Bible this year and, um, separately together, but it has been amazing because we'll read the reading for the day and things will come up that we're both like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. And then it gives us um, something to talk about um, and to consider, about. to laugh yeah. about. Yeah. The Bible is funny. Yeah. Um, but that has been life-changing. And it's funny because we've done this before. Like we've Multiple read through times. the Bible yeah. on the Version app too. Yeah. And this year we've, we're just reading, he's reading the King James Version paper wow. mixing it up. and I'm reading yeah. New King James and, and, um, and it has been revolutionary. And I was telling Lee, as we were walk, we were ran and then we walked, which was awesome. Um, but the fact that I feel like I'm reading through the Bible, like I, like I've never done it before. And just the things that God has been like opening my eyes to, and there's just, a an awe and a wonder and, oh my gosh, have I've read this before, but I've not read this before. And like Levi was saying yeah. too, it's like, I've never read, I've never been in this part of scripture in this season of my life. And God's right. speaking something fresh to my soul and he's um, opening my eyes and he's um, building up my curiosity for more of him. And so as we read separately, but then we discuss together, like God's just like knitting our hearts together even more. And it's been so deepening for our relationship. Well, and it makes sense. You know, a lot of couples are going to try and waste some time this year just trying to get closer to each other. Mm. And and hear me what I'm saying. Of course, that sounds like, wait, what do you mean? How is that a bad thing? Well, you know, in and of itself, that's not a bad thing, but I think it's a flawed uh, approach. Meaning if I'm trying to get closer to Jenny, I'm making more and more her the center of my heart, right? But if I'm just trying to get close to Jesus and she happens to be doing the exact same thing, well, then by default, we're getting closer to each other because we're both making Jesus the center of our heart. So it's like we like to picture a triangle. If if two people in a triangle are moving towards the, the point or the fulcrum, you're getting closer to each other, even though you're not trying to get to each other. Mm. So it's almost like the yeah. whole seek ye first the kingdom of God. Sorry to shift into King James uh, and, <laughs> and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. It's like if you pursue Jesus, you get the marriage thrown in. Whereas if you try and just save the marriage in and of itself, well, we do a really bad job of completing each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think uh, some time in the word together will really revolutionize uh, your relationship. Good. I I love it. And that's the way Nancy and I have done with the Bible each year that we've done. And we've done this for seven or eight years, but we don't really sit down and read it together, but we read the same thing Mm -hmm. and then we can interact on it. And it, I, I just would um, reiterate everything you guys said. I mean, it's so amazing when you read something, you think, okay, I've been reading the Bible through every year for so many years. I never saw that before. Yeah. Well, I did, but today it meant something. Today it made an impact on my life. Today it was different than when I read it last year. And I, I, I think I just want people to see that in the Bible, that it is so unique and it's like, yes, it was written thousands of years ago, but it's so relevant to every day of our lives. Yeah. What's well, trippy though is thinking God's outside of time. He sees the end from the beginning. So literally, Dr. Kim, you know, when you read last week, the thing you did that touched you, God in his Holy Spirit's sovereignty and understanding and omniscience, he knew what you were going to be dealing with as he put those words into the heart of Jeremiah or Matthew mm. or, or Paul, yeah. which is outrageous to think that he saw the implications through the hurricane to the butterfly's wings of how he was going to use that in your life and how it was going to hit me in the same way, but deal with a different thing, which is yeah. just, it's mind blowing. And you don't want to miss it. You know, it's like the, the whole, whole question about the tree making the sound in the forest. You know, if God really does have new mercies each morning, I hate the thought that a day ends and I didn't go to his throne to get those mercies that I, I can never get mm. those back. I can get tomorrow's mercies, but I can't ever get yesterday's mercies back. And so, so I, to quote Aerosmith, I don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, that, that just looked true. And it just, uh, it, it's amazing. And it's so cool that he did that for us. Yeah. Heck, heck yeah. Well, cool. And how, 
like you said earlier, Dr. Kim, how the, the word is alive, it's living and it's powerful and what it's able to do in us that we aren't even fully aware of most of the time. Like it's able to discern and slice and, um, and bring life and beauty and strength and purpose. And there's just so much that it's doing that we can sometimes only even see like the surface things. Like we'll read something and we'll see, oh my gosh, this impacted me. Yeah. But so much more was impacting us that we it might don't not even, even know. be the thing you think you need. Yeah. You know, I always tell my church to 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 watch out for the the perceived sense of I didn't get anything out of that sermon. Hmm. You know, because the truth is what we actually needed, we might not even realize. You know, God can speak a word in season, but he's also capable of speaking a word out of season. Good. That is to say, he might be tucking a revelation inside your heart for a situation you don't even know that you're going to be facing in a coming day. Uh, so we have to always have a real sense of humility reading scripture that we're not the best judges of what we actually need. Uh, Cause the thing that might get everybody on their feet clapping might be that might, might not be the actual thing you really needed. It might be a conviction. Mm. It might be a chastisement. You know, David said before I was afflicted, I went to stray. So his, he got off course. He's saying I was astray and then I was afflicted. It brought me back. And that's yeah. what the shepherd does. He doesn't just, you know, give the sheep the the, the tasty treat of green dr gr green grass and cool waters. He also uses that rod, you know, which is basically a club. And uh, so God in his mercy knows exactly what we need. But I also think, you know, everyone loves that verse. Um, so shall my, my word that comes from my mouth, it, it will not return to me void. You know, that God's going to do what his promise says he, he's going to do. Mm. And the tragedy of that verse mm. is a lot of people stop right there. But, but you have to keep reading in that chapter to know that he next says that instead of the thorn bush, you might have the myrtle. Basically, mm. what he's saying is, what is this word trying to do? He's trying to take the thorny parts of our heart and to bring about lush, uh, flourishing, tropical, beautiful foliage. So if yeah. we let God's word have its way, our marriages don't have to be full of thorns. You know, when you touch the bush and, oh, man, that, the nettle gets you, it stings your finger. That's what a lot of people's marriages are like. They're just, we, we're, we're getting stung. We're getting our feelings hurt. We're going to bed angry. We, we wanted to make love, but they weren't interested. They weren't giving us what we wanted. Yeah. Or they, they took all the money and did blah, blah, blah. And they don't watch the kids and no one, you know, that's marriages are full of stinging. But when you let God's word, uh, not return to you void, but you let it supersede feelings and supersede, you know, vindictive behavior, all these things, eventually your marriage can be fresh it can be a source of blessing it can feel like a palm tree who doesn't love a palm tree and i think that's what god intends for us to experience oh, so good so, i yeah. i think levi brought up something so good as far as um like being in church together and i think that's also because also we, we want to read the bible and we want to be growing together as a couple but also being in church together in a church where you're receiving the word together i've seen so many couples in our church um, where there's growth, where there was death before, where they, there was, they, mm. they were on the brink of divorce and God just, or maybe murder, yeah. maybe murder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, God just, um, brought life into their marriage. And, um, what's so beautiful about being in church together is you're both receiving God's word but there's such a strength that happens when you listen together. And I think that that's just a, an over, overall statement of when you come to church and you gather with God's church, with God's people, when, this, when the word is preached, there's something powerful that happens as we're listening it, to it together because we'll glean something. Someone else will hear something else. So God will speak something. And, so, and then when you get together with a small group and you talk about it, when you get together with your spouse and you talk about it, there's a, a deepening that happens. And I, it's so important to be in church and to be the church together as a married couple. Um, Cause there's just, there's strength that comes from that. And when you brought that up, I just yeah. was no, reminded. I mean, we were on so vacation huge. the other day and it was Sunday and we, man, we, we went to, we found a church and went to it. And, you know, just to sit there together, holding hands under the teaching of God's word, it was a reminder to both of us. Of mm -hmm. course, normally one of one of the, one or two of us is preaching or, traveling when the other one's not, yeah. uh, but to sit together under God's word, to sit there without the pressure of, oh man, I need to preach for other people and for us to go, hey, we both want to be under this as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think that really is a game changer. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're, you know, actually when they started talking about the other day and, and I told her, I said, you know, we always usually are in church together and sitting by aside, but I said, 
there's a difference when she's not beside me. I, mm. I just think of how God has used that in our marriage together. And I, you know, I, I, I was going to ask you, I, I talked to so many pastors the last few months who, you know, because of the pandemic, everybody's not coming back. And I think just what you and Jenny were saying, we need to be in that building. We yeah. need to be in there together. There's so much value. I remember the first time that Life Church opened back up and we went and of course chairs were scattered. You couldn't even see the other people in the building. <laughs> but but when they started the worship music, it was just like, oh yeah, it's different being in here than being online. And I love online. Thank yeah. goodness we had it during the pandemic. Yeah. But there is something about being in there and just the presence of God in that place that is just very, very special. Well, it's so true. And, you know, there will never be, in my, at least in my heart, uh, a, a life where online is not a part of the strategy, you know, to reach right. out to people who, you know, maybe are on the fringe or, you know, who aren't comfortable yet to come in or, you know, it'll always hopefully reach people and there's a place for it. But, but I do think that, um, like you said, you know, if you're not worshiping with other voices around you, the Bible says God inhabit, inhabits the praises of his people. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about me singing, I can worship God alone. But when you do, when there's a gathering and what that looks like, you know, I know that people will gather together and watch church online and that's powerful, you know, but I think, yeah. I, I just think the, 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 the key thing is that we're not meant to live life in isolation yeah, Absolutely. and just to consume, but to, to be bringing friends and to be doing it together. And, and it will just, it'll invigorate your marriage. I, I personally think there's nothing sexier than seeing someone praise God because you, you're realizing that's what they were born to do. And there's such a strength in it and a power in it. And that's in good season and bad seasons. And uh, it's just, it's, 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 it's amazing what happens when you get your priorities at the right place, how, how you give God something to bless. Well, and there's a richness um, because yes, coming and hearing the word and worshiping together, but there's a richness with just doing life with people and having, I mean, we say, or we've heard it takes a, a village to raise a family. And it's like, it also takes a village to have a strong marriage because you see yeah. um, older couples, like to get to see you and Nancy live um, and be faithful and married for 50 years. That's beautiful. Huge. And that's inspiring. And when you're in the church, you get, you get that, like you get a, a bunch of people who some are amazingly happily olderly married and some aren't. And you get all the examples of like what to do and what not to do. And you also get to be an example to younger couples and younger singles and kids. And we just, we need to see Jesus in action in all of us in different phases and different people. And there's just, there's life that happens when we do yeah, that together. A lot, is, a lot, a lot has yeah. been said about how the church needs to be like heaven in that it's every tribe, tongue, and language. And that's important. But it's also equally important to recognize the church needs to be generational. Yeah. One generation shall extol another about God's glorious works. Mm. So it is important and vitally uh, essential that young are seeing the old and worshiping alongside that. Because there is there is something that's lost in the experience when a church is just all one race. And it's also true that a, just a church that would be all 20 somethings would be at a oh. great disadvantage in not having the example uh, of, of the older generation to be inspired by in their faithfulness. And then also the older generation to be challenged by and invigorated by the, both the energy and the fresh ideas and revelation. And the, you know, it's the old and, and the young in, in partnership that really is also the kingdom of God. Mm. That's so true. You know, it just made me think when we were before we had kids, having kids, we always looked for that couple in our church that was at least a stage ahead of us yeah. that we could sit down with. We could say, how did you do this? What do we need to be doing? We're not doing, or we don't know what to do, you know, and, and to have that where you know that their foundation is the same as yours, that you're both coming from wanting to serve God and belief in Christ. Uh, it was invaluable to us. We had so many people that mentored us and poured into us over the years. And, and look at that. Now you're doing so the exact, you're doing the exact thing in reverse. You're yeah. offering yourself yeah. generously. Yeah. It's like comfort. We, we get comfort so we can give it. I think you were saying I was hungry for that example. Mm. And now you're seeking to be that. So good on you Absolutely. for yeah. paying that forward. Right. It's good. Yeah. And, and it's just, yeah. Cause it, cause it meant so much to us to have that as we were Amazing. Uh, so the quote that you said, great husbands and wives are made, not born. What are some of the ways you've worked at being 
a great husband. And then I'm asking Jenny about being a great wife. Well, I would never consider myself a great husband. You are I, a great husband. I'm growing though. I've grown, I've seen growth. I've seen the Holy Spirit lead and, and I've sought to grow in it. And um, there's nothing in my life yeah. more important. No, no accomplishment, no ministry opportunity means more to me than being uh, a husband to Jenny and a, a dad to uh, Olivia and Daisy and Clover and Lennox and Linnea while we had her. Um, you know, if I don't go to that conference or if I don't speak next Sunday, guess what? Someone else can, someone else will, mm. but who else can, can love Jenny? Who else can, can pray for Olivia and, you know, and, and serve them in that way. And that's, that's, that's my most important ministry and everything else that happens from there. Like the prophet Jeremiah was told, it starts at Anathoth. You know, no one knows who Anathoth, where Anathoth is, but that's Jeremiah's first and most important ministry. It's home. Mm. And then God sent him to yeah. Jer Jerusalem and Egypt and whatever. But it, he said, can you do it at Anathoth? Can you start here? And I think a lot of people want to go do great things for God, but God uh, doesn't want to export anything that's not working at home, you know? And so um, I've, so I've sought to grow by, uh, as you alluded to, asking wise seasoned men who are older than me looking at their example first yeah going hey how, how does he serve her how does he love her how can i yeah. pattern myself after the bible says uh follow the example of those who you've seen inherit the promises so i'm not basing my marriage strategy off of someone who's you know a bad leader I want to see what, what does this look like uh, at home? What does victory look like there? Mm -hmm. So that's been the the example uh, through repentance, through calling myself on it where I haven't, where I've not, you know, measured up to the standard. And and then I, th I would say, lastly, studying. I try mm -hmm. and study Jenny and try and learn from what, 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 what makes her thrive, what makes her, you know, um, partially because um, like Pavlov's dog, if there's a reward in it, if you're going to get the treat, your mouth's going to salivate. So it's like, uh, hey, if Jenny seems like if I make the bed, well, guess what? That's not that hard of a thing. If I can make the bed, I made my bed this morning because I want her to see it and I want to treat, right? It's like, <laughs> I'm like a little puppy, right? So those little things though, yeah. uh, I don't want to keep burning my hand on the stove and not learn because that's just the height of, of stupidity, uh, Einstein said, expecting different results from the same uh, activity. So that's that's what I would say. That's so good. And I, I think we do have to continue to study our spouse. I mean, if I yeah. look back over how Nancy, I knew her well at 20 years old, but she's a different person in so many ways. There's a mm. lot of that 20 year old there. But if I hadn't, I would have missed, I look at it, I would have missed out on so much if I would have just quit studying her. Wait and a big part of this is so asking good. the question, hey, yeah. do you, do you, what do you like? What do, what do I not do? And what do I not see? What? Because it's funny because you, you keep doing something. It's like, I did this because I thought you liked it. It was like, actually, I don't need you to do that. It's like, oh, <laughs> amazing. That's because I never liked doing it either. You know, so I think that's, that's really <laughs> so helpful. You take that off the table. Yeah, great. Yeah. So Jenny? Um, well, Levi, you've, I, I love growing with you and I love learning the hard way with you. And I would say um, I... Um, I mean, like what you're saying about being strong at home. I love the quote. I don't know who said it. You you will know. Um, the light that shines the farthest burns the brightest at home. And I think that that has been um, both an inspiration and challenge to me my whole life of I feel like it's easy for me to be kind to a stranger and so hard for me to be kind and loving to my husband and my kids. Like it's just – one of those things that's like, I, I, it's easy for me to just like be helpful to someone else, but not help my husband. And, and my, what I, I've seen God do and grow me in and what I want to grow in more is burning the brightest at home and shining the furthest from home and um, being my best with Levi and my kids. And, um, and so I feel like I've learned the hard way um, by not being that. And I, I think that there's so much beauty and strength in learning in the hard way and falling flat on my face and, and like Levi said, walking in humility and just being like, I totally messed up there. I'm so sorry. And I feel like mm. that um, mentality and that heart of just learning from hard things, I think has, has been something that has helped me um, grow as a wife. And I have so much more growth to do, but I'm just thankful for a husband who's gracious and patient and gentle. That's awesome.
Very awesome. That's so cool. I just had to stop and drink that in, that <laughs> in a little bit. That was so good. That was so good. Uh, okay, let's talk just a minute. If there is uh, sex is um, discussed a lot in the devotional. Uh, people don't. So many people think God doesn't um, think about our sex life or is aware of it. So, what's the connection? Why is that in the book, and and how does God look at sex? Yeah, that's so good. Well, we just knew right away when we were going to write a book about marriage, it was going to not be the varnished, you know, lacquered, uh, you know, go on the mantle like you know freely. We wanted to really get down to the nuts and bolts and talk about it. And that that, may, that, that brings so much pleasure and pain to people's lives. Mm. A lot of uh, pain because of, uh, you know, un unarticulated expectations, unhealed baggage and trauma that's brought into the marriage. And honestly, having a frame of reference that, that's unrealistic and maybe more shaped from culture mm. than from, you know, the scriptures. And the Bible has so much to say about sex, like a re an actual, like, astounding amount, both yeah. good and evil. It It is a part of who we are. God made us male and female in his image. So a part of how we relate to each other and enjoy or or misuse this gift of sex uh, is, is a part, is fundamentally a part of how we were built. And so to use and to, or in order to misuse uh, sex is, is, is to bring about either God's best or what he knows is his second best or, or far worse than that for our lives. And so we try and point people back to what the scriptures has to say. And what does it say? It says sex is a gift. It's to be uh, undefiled. And inside the marriage, it's undefiled. It's to be enjoyed. It's to be spoken well of. It's technically um, one of the first gifts God ever gave to us. After he gave the nap in hmm. Genesis, he put a deep sleep on Adam. And once he woke up, he had bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. And he was excited about that. And God said, it's good. You know, God proclaimed this special blessing, uh, this Barak blessing over what he had given mm. to us. And so I think um, we have to start with that. So the, the sex wasn't the devil's idea. So this idea of like yeah. sex is dirty, naughty, and gross. So save it for your wife is, is, is not <laughs> biblical. Right. Um, it is to be oh. a delight. It's to warm up your heart. It's to help you heal. It's to give you courage. It's to keep you together. Um, it's an offensive weapon. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's an incredible thing to grow in. And just like you quoted from the book about, you know, uh, great husbands and wives are, are made, not born. You also are going to grow in your gift of how you use and steward sexuality. Yeah. And, and over time, it's meant to become like a fine wine. Jenny and I are unapologetic about saying we're having better sex and, and more enjoyable sex than we ever have in our lives. 19 years in, we're just figuring out, I can't wait to see what's around the river bend. Mm -hmm. And the yep. thought of, it gets better. You know, there you go. So there's Dr. Kim giving his <laughs> uh, seal of approval. Woo, woo. <laughs> yep, uh, so we want to point people to uh, understanding and using this well. And uh, so a lot of that's going to take healing and a, yeah. lot, a lot of that's going to take communication and laughter. Uh, Dr. Tim Keller said, if you don't ever, every once in a while laugh while you're having sex, you are doing it wrong <laughs> because it is so silly. And if you, if you can't, can't take yourself seriously, you're not in a porno, you're not in a movie. This isn't some, you know, you know, quick thing. This some, some, you know, lurid thing. It's this beautiful, incredible um, love language that God has given to us to, to be able to learn and speak. And just like I couldn't speak French after a week trying it. So to learn and speak yeah. uh, fluent in, in sex with my spouse is going to take a lifetime. It's beautiful. That's what I'm and here so for. Well funny said. things happen in sex. You know, the funny things do happen. And, and uh, mostly kids yeah. banging on the doors for us these days. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, is, yeah. Have a good lock on your door. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really important uh, first step. Uh, That's one of the things I tell couples when they get ready to have the first child. Make sure there's a lock on your bedroom door. Yes. And make sure your Disney Plus account is in good standing, you know? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. All that good stuff. Any thoughts on the, that part of it, Jenny? Gosh, I don't think I could say it as well as Levi just did. I think um, so good. the fact that it's something we can grow in is, is mind blowing. I mean, Levi and I have talked about it before, like to think where we were, we both saved the gift of sex for marriage. And like when we first got married, um, the expectations and um, how it went, like it was amazing then, but I, I would have had no idea that it could be what it is now. And just, um, I, it's just incredible. And I'm so, I'm grateful that we um, 
were both had that view before we got married of, of the fact that it was a gift and that we wanted to mm-hmm. save it for each other. And, um, but even so, like there's still been, um, difficult things along the way, as far as just communication and, um, just so much to grow in. And so what's so beautiful is God's grace covers everything in our lives. And even in this, I know it's, it can be such a sticky subject for, um, some people who have, like Levi said, there's baggage that they're bringing in and they've had, um, sex with multiple people before marriage and, um, pornography and all these things. And what's so amazing is that no matter where someone is at this very moment, there's hope for strength and beauty and growth and grace and, um, and um, just an amazing like turnaround from what maybe what was because God's able to do so much more than what we Yes. could ever hope for. Well, it's just like Dave Ramsey, when he brings those people on the show to scream out, I'm debt free, you know, and they're like, we paid off $37,000 and they're like weeping over it. It's like to think you could ever get there. How do you get there? Well, Dave Ramsey always says baby steps, mm-hmm. you know? So to the yeah. person listening is going, I don't know if we could ever even get there. It's like, no, listen, you could get to a place where your marriage is, it means even more to you because of that trauma. Yeah. And it's even um, more powerful in God's hands because of the broken bone, you know, that he mm. can set, heal. And it can, I, when I understand a broken bone that heals properly can be actually even stronger than it was before the break. Mm. So, you know, there's hope for you. Yeah. Sex can be a blessing and the devil doesn't have to use it against you. You can like Samson said, you know, take down the Philistine garrison for your two eyes. Mm. Uh, and I like to say, let's, let's, let's make the devil pay what, for what he was stupid enough to, to, to bring it to our lives, you yeah. know? So yeah. we speak hope over, over whatever place you're in. Absolutely. I love that. Thank you for saying that. I mean, it, it is. And, and I think uh, God can redeem all the things that have been in our life before the sex, yes. or whatever the baggage we bring. And he, and I've just seen it as a counselor many times that he's built some amazing things and mm. we just, and it does take time. I mean, you know, I, I think what I've seen over our marriage is we've gone closer as we figured out more about each other and about God, want, what God wants us to do and what God wants for us in our marriage. All that has made our sex life better mm. because we are more connected much more connected than we were 50 years ago. We thought we were connected then, but yeah. I don't think we understood the depth of what God could do in a marriage that he's doing with you and Jenny that he does Definitely. with other people. Yeah. As you just give yourself to him. Yeah, that's so true. It's amazing. All right, final question. What are you really enjoying about your marriage today in this stage? Jenny? Um, Jeannie? Well, I feel like there is something to be said about when you have kids. I mean, we as women, we go through a lot (laughs) with hormones and... No, the question was, what are you enjoying? (laughs) I know. I'm just, I'm trying to get there. I'm just starting, I'm painting the picture. (laughs) I was like, that doesn't sound enjoyable. (laughs) No, I'm just saying, I'm, what I'm saying is I feel like I've, there were many years where I was in a cloud feeling like, My body is not feeling right. My mind, my brain, like Mm -hmm. hormones, tiredness, postnatal depression, or I I don't know if I ever actually had it, but it's just a thing. It's just hard. And I feel like I'm in this season um, where I feel like God's growing me and opening my eyes to see. And I feel like I can see more clearly and I can enjoy more fully. And I feel like as, as I'm growing with the Lord and Levi is too, like, I just feel like we were talking about this the other day, like in these past, even specifically these past couple months, we've just been in a rhythm of just enjoying each other and laughing more. And um, like, we just had a family vacation, Levi mentioned, and I think it was the best one that we've ever had. Like there's just easy Hands a down. beauty to it and a funness. Mm-hmm. And I don't think funness is a word, but I just feel it. I feel like there's almost an ease and not that I'm like backing off and like, and putting the brakes on and like, I'm not working as hard as I have, like, cause there's danger in that. But I feel like we're, we're partaking in the fruit of hard yeah. work and with our youngest being five, our oldest being 17, I feel like that really does also 
help. Compound interest kicks in a little bit. The olders can watch the younger. <laughs> yeah. It does like like you've seen with the grandkids, it does kind of you start to go, oh man, all that hard work. You know, if you if you saved a dollar a day from when you're a kid, it's, it's it adds up. You know, like it's it's it, parents start saving with your kids now. You don't mm. have a lot to do it. Um, you know, your kids are saving up for little stuffed animals and stuff. We're teaching them they can incrementally buy stock. You know, it's like you don't want to buy something from Amazon or do you want to buy part of Amazon? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but like just like that, um, if if you begin putting into the deposit account of your marriage, eventually there's going to be something there to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And I think what Jenny's saying, and I would reiterate that I'm enjoying in this season is, um, is seeing like, wow, there's dividends coming in yeah. from our relationship equity, from fighting together, from working hard. And that's one of the things, you know, we're trying to champion with this book coming out is that you, you can see God's blessings in your arms. You know, mm -hmm. you literally will be able to hold it. If you, if you go forth sowing, even while you weep, one day you'll come back rejoicing with your arms full of harvest. Hmm. And I, I think in this season, we're whether eating shave ice or putting a sermon together or leading our team, you know, we're grateful for what God's done, but we also have a light touch, yeah. you know, we, being a pastor, leading, writing, none of that stuff's our identity. Our identity is children of the King. Yeah. And then we're husband and wife together and it's kind of Jen and I against the world. And if you don't like it, that's all right. Cause my wife does like me and I'm happy with that, you know? And so <laughs> I, I'm we're, we're both, I think, on the same page there and just really grateful for that. Yeah, I love that. Gal, it's so well said. The book is The Marriage Devotional. Uh, if they want to, obviously, that'll be that's available everywhere. I think when this comes out and um, where else can they find you if they want to find you or find you and Jenny or find Jenny? Well, if we're doing a, a good job, they're not going to find us. We're hiding out, Dr. Kim. <laughs> we're going to be we're gonna be making out in our bomb shelter. So where's the trickle from the past? <laughs> uh, no, you'll, you you can find us uh, on our podcast. Hey, it's Celesco's uh, and then the Fresh Life Church uh, most Sundays. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love what you guys do together and apart. I, I, I love uh, what goes on at Fresh Life. I love being able to keep up with that. And uh, just thank you guys for taking time out of your schedule, spend some time with us, sharing your experiences and wisdom. And I'm excited for everybody here to pick up this book and grow in the relationship with each other and with God. So thanks again, guys. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for what you do and how you help marriages and people and um, you and your wife, we just are so thankful for you. So. Yeah, time with you is a blessing to both of us. So yeah. thank you. And please thank your wife for us. Yes. I will. Thank you, guys.